morning. morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us all rejoice and be glad in it. Once again, God has shown himself to be faithful. He has awakened us for another day's journey. Amen. And old people used to say, and I'm glad about it. Amen. It's a blessing to be on top of the ground, as I always say, and not have the ground on top of us. The fact that you're breathing Day is indeed a blessing. And so uh, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. Um, I'm going to hop into the Word of God. Because God is always speaking. He's still speaking. He's still uh, faithful to give us what we need. Um, he promised to be a very present help in time of trouble. And quite frankly, people are still in trouble. Mm -hmm. uh, we are still in trouble as a people. We are still in trouble as a church. We are still in trouble as the universal church. We are in trouble, period. Uh, but God is still on the throne. And since he's on the throne, he's going to continue to be God. Uh, one thing I love about God before we pray is that his posture never changes. Amen. His posture never changes. He's always the same. The Bible says that he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And so I'm so glad that we serve a God that we can trust. In time of crisis, we serve a God that we can trust. In time of trouble, we can we, we serve a God we can trust when things are going well. We just serve a God we can trust, period. Uh, and it's just good to know that we can look to the hills from which comes our help, knowing that our help comes from the Lord. So um, if you are breathing today, if you are on the live video, if you're sitting in here, you are blessed. Amen. Amen. You, you are blessed uh, beyond measure. And if God never does another thing for you, I know that you can say just like I can, that he's already done enough. Because there was some stuff long before now that should have taken us out. But the fact that we are still here, not only are you still here, but you are still clothed in your right mind. Did y'all hear me? I said you are still clothed in your right mind. And I know that we've had some moments where we didn't know if we were gonna make it. Didn't know if I was going to be able to handle this stuff that has entered my life. Did not know if I would be able to take it. Just didn't know. But now when I look back over my life, I know who it was that kept me. Amen. It wasn't always family. It wasn't always friends. You know, let me tell you something about your circumstance. It will reveal your circle. Amen. Yeah. Your troubles in this life will reveal who people are around you. Amen. And sometimes we need that revelation because I need to know how to move moving forward. Yes. I got to position myself to win. And sometimes that means I got to I got to switch out. I got to change up. I got to let some people go. Mm -hmm. There might be some people that have to let me go because I'm not suitable for everybody else's life. Amen. Amen. And you got to be okay with that. Whatever adjustments God makes in your life at this point you should be okay with it whatever you do lord i know you you're putting me in a position to win amen and i trust him even when i can't trace him i trust him even when i don't feel him i trust him even when i can't see everything that he's doing i trust him 
Amen. And sometimes you got to, you might be the only one with your hands lifted. You might be the only one with the faith that you have, but this ain't about you and everybody else. This is a personal journey. Lord, I trust you. I trust you. And so let us pray and we're going to get into the word. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you for another day's journey. We thank you for the blessing. When we say blessings, we don't use that word lightly. You have blessed us beyond what we truly deserve. And we're grateful. We're so thankful that you think about us. So thankful that we're always on your mind. So thankful that your love is unconditional. So thankful that you keep on making a way out of no way. So thankful that you that you never switch up on us, God. So thankful that you're not like man. So thankful that you know everything about us and still choose to love us. We're so thankful today. And if we had ten thousand tongues. It just wouldn't be enough to give you the praise that you are truly worthy of. We love you, God, because you first loved us. We worship you today in spirit and in truth. Forgive us of our sins because we have sinned against you. We have come short of the glory of God. Your word says if we confess our sins, if we tell you all about it, if we are honest with you, that you are faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Create within us a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us. Teach us that we can worship you regardless of what season of life we're in. Teach us how to be faithful worshipers because the Bible says uh, that you inhabit the praises of your people, God. So that means that wherever we worship and praise you, you live in that atmosphere. And so, God, we know that you're faithful to show up, God, and you always show out. And I pray, God, that you would help us to acknowledge your presence in every aspect of our lives. Help us, God, to get better, to be better, to strive to be the best version of ourselves, to be like you, to be more Christ-like, and to be less like that old man that you crucified over and over again. Have your way through the word and we'll be careful to give you all the praise for we ask this in the mighty name of Jesus, amen. 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 Now you know that if we're going to give God a hand clap of praise, then we can't have do it. Amen. So if you're going to give God praise, just go on and give him a... Amen. You got to stop half doing this stuff. Because God never has steps when it comes to us. Amen. Today, I, I want to talk about standing on God's promises. I know people are saying a lot of stuff. But you know what I want God to teach me at this juncture in my life? I want him to teach me how to stand on what he said. Because everybody has something to say. It's a lot of intellectuals. It's a lot of know-it-alls. It's a lot of therapists. It's a lot of people who claim to be the way. But what is God saying? Because obviously, this generation ain't hearing much of what God is saying. And let's just get honest about it. When you look around at all the things that are going on in our midst, you have to ask yourself the question, are people really hearing God? 
Because when he speaks, he does speak with a still small voice. God is not screaming. He's speaking in that still small voice. And only those, yeah, who have ears to hear will hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. You are the church. We are the church. We are the local ecclesia. We are the called out ones. We are the chosen ones. And in this society, we have to learn how to stand when everybody else is bowing. Can I say that again? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I said we. I'm talking about the church have to learn how to stand when everybody else is bowing. Yep. We are in the last days. If you, if you didn't know that, I don't know if you've ever read your Bible. We are in the last days and only the strong will survive. People are converting over to all this weird religion just to fit in. Pastors not willing to have conversations with people who are speaking a different language than them. And I, I believe that people just want to know. I don't believe that everybody who asks you a question is trying to be messy. I don't think they're trying to be combative. I think they just want knowledge. I think they want to know. Because if you are a true, if you are a person that truly studies the word of God, at some point in your study, if you've never had questions about some things, if, if you never questioned some of the miracles, if you've never, if your mind just accepts anything without some type of analyzing, interrogating, further research, then you will fall for anything. And let me just make this statement very clear. You can believe the word and trust God and take him at his word and still have questions. Hello, somebody. I'm tapping my wig. <laughs> I said, you can still believe God, stand on his word, and still have questions when you get, because sometimes there's tension in the text. But you know what people have told you? Don't ever question God. Jesus was the main one who questioned him. I'm told to be a follower of Christ, to be an imitator of Christ. That's what the word is saying. And if he asks questions, that means that I have a right to ask him too. Yeah, if I'm going to imitate him, yeah. that is, if I have questions, and James says, if you ask God, he gives you freely. And upbraid it not according to the word of God. He doesn't hold it against you because you have questions. If I'm going to ask somebody a question, why not ask God? Isn't he the one who has all the answers? And so as a child of God, you should feel comfortable going to God, having a conversation with him about the things that you're not sure about. But today I want to talk about standing on the promises of God. And I, I got to define some things. To stand on the promises of God is not only to have complete assurance in the fulfillment of what he promised, but it also means to live your life in faithful service to the one who made the promise. Do you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to live my life in such a way that it brings him glory. I'm tired of trying to please people. Amen. If, if, you, if you with me, say amen. amen. Tired of trying to please people who cannot be pleased. And I would rather have one friend 
and God be pleased with me than have an amen corner telling me everything I want to hear and not what I need to hear and God be totally displeased with my life. Because you know what? At the end of the day, when you really need these folk, a great percentage of them won't even be, you won't be able to reach them. One thing I cannot stand is when somebody says, if you ever need me, stop, don't put yourself in you know you don't have to finish that statement, right? You can stop with if you ever need me. But if you complete the sentence, you ever need me, call me. See, but here's what they don't take into consideration. When I need you, it might be inconvenient for you. I might need you at 2 in the morning. I might be feeling suicidal. What if you're on a date? And you getting your groove on. Oh, you got your phone on D and D. Or you see me calling. Um, I'll call them back tomorrow. Because I'm not a priority. But you told me. If I ever need you to call you, I call you and don't even get a call back when you're available. I hope you're not that type of friend. I hope you're not that type of person. If you tell somebody you're going to call them, call them. If you say you're going to be there for them, be there when you can. Uh, of course you can't show up every time somebody needs you, but stop opening your mouth. Yes, sir. How about stop saying it? And just, if they call you, and you can be available. Yeah. At least you didn't put yourself in a situation to say mm -hmm. that if you need me, call me. We got to learn to stop just saying stuff because it sounds good. Because the truth of the matter is that I ain't always available. Right. I had to learn that. When I realized I was hopping up at 2 o'clock in the morning, stopping folk from going and kill somebody. It was a good reason to get up, a good reason to intervene. But sometimes it is an inconvenience for you to show up and make somebody a priority that you don't know. But you give God the glory because God uses you in ways that stop drama. Yeah. Amen. You give him the glory, you go on back to the crib, go to sleep, and boom. Just, but imagine telling everybody that. Your phone will never stop ringing. God didn't call you to everybody. Woo! It's hot in here. I said, God didn't call you to everybody. Everybody is not your assignment. Am I clear? Yeah. Yeah. Just like I understand, I'm a pastor, but I'm not everybody's pastor. Everybody don't even like me. Everybody don't even rock with me. I'm okay with that. Because if we don't rock, God never called me to you. At least not in this season. Because I've known people to not like me now, love me later. Right. Once they realize that you're not everything that other folk are painting, because people have a tendency to paint a picture of you to people who don't know you, and some folks are so immature that they will run with the picture that somebody else painted without getting to know you. How are you going to be grown still doing little boy and little girl stuff? What if God places your blessing in the hand of somebody that you won't even speak to? When you can't pay that light bill and that person got connections. <laughs> but you can't go to them until you swallow your pride and apologize, and apologize to them for misjudging them and mishandling somebody you don't even know. 
anybody knows it, I know it. I do too. <laughs> and I ain't want to brag and boast about what I've done to people, but man, listen, I have put people in hotel rooms out of the rain, and then they will delete me two weeks later. I don't even really know you, but I came to your rescue, got you out of the rain, and then when I run into you, you ask me, do I remember you? Of course I remember you. You're the one who deleted me. <laughs> and then when you ask them further, like, what happened? Oh, somebody said, hold up, whoa, whoa. How do you know me? What is your relationship with me? What has your experience with me been? Nothing but good. And see, as an adult, as a believer, you got to stop allowing people to get in your head, causing you to burn bridges that you can't never build again. And you know, now don't send me no request now. <laughs> nah, I'm not accepting it. Amen. Amen. And then, listen, people, folk don't mind throwing other folk under the bus. They call people names. And I'm like, we already worked that out. Mm -hmm. They didn't come back and tell you that we worked that issue out. And that they were just speaking out the side of their neck because they was in their feelings and that what they were saying was just, I'm trying to teach. You do it. <laughs> At the end of the day, you got to make sure that your dependency is not on man, but that your dependency is always on God. We're talking about standing on his promises. To stand on his promises also means not to bow or to give or to give in or be persuaded to go against the will of God. I refuse to intentionally go against the will of God. Will you go against the will of God at times? Yeah, you're going to go against it because your flesh is going to want something more than God wants to allow it. And if God says no, your flesh says I'll take it anyway. And then your will is at odds with God's will. There's a conflict of interest there. Somebody's will has to bow, and somebody's will has to break. And I've never seen God broken. So that means that if you refuse to yield to the will of God, then there has to be a series of events that occur that helps you to align your life with God. The problem here is that we never know what those series of events entail. I don't know what I'm gonna have to go through. I don't know what I'm gonna have to deal with. I don't know what I'm gonna have to face before I accept God's will and throw mine away. It's not that you don't have a will, but the issue is that when you want to do your own thing and it goes against what God wants for you, sometimes God will let you do it for a season. Now I want him because I love him or her. And God says, but they don't love you, baby. But I, I, I believe that they will once they really get to know who I am, God says, I know you in them. And you ain't in their future. <laughs> but God, you don't understand. You know, because I got a way with people. God says, I made people. And not only did I make people, I am the beginning and the end. Therefore, everything in between the beginning and the end, I also know that too. You're not in their future. 
Well, I'm going to stay anyway. God says, I have something better for you. No, I don't want better. I want what's convenient. I want now. God says, now is not the time. Uh, but God, that's your opinion. God says, I don't operate off opinion. I operate off all facts. I'm God. I make the facts. As a matter of fact. And God says, I'll tell you what. Just like with the children of Israel, we want a king. God says, you don't need a king. I'm your king. Uh, we want what everybody else got. God says, no, you don't. Yes, we do. Can we get a consensus? Yeah, we all want a king. God says, it don't get no better than me, though. Right. How can you replace what's already the best? I fed you all manna from heaven when you were hungry. Pharaoh was coming after you. I parted the Red Sea. I did all this for y'all. You were thirsty. I made water come out of the rock. God says, I've done all of these things for y'all. Pulled you out of slavery. Did all this because I love you. Led you fire by night, cloud by day. And at the end of all of this, you want somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. I gave you life, but you want somebody else. God says, all right, I'll tell you what, I'm going to give you a king. You ask for it, you're going to get it. Now, I know y'all kind of quiet because you're listening. But I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, be careful what you ask for. Because, because we think that it's okay to just keep on bugging God. God heard you the first time. You know, God ain't like people where you got to keep on reminding him and keep on going back and saying, God, don't you remember I said that? God says, I heard you the first time. <laughs> and the reason I have not moved on your behalf and given you what you asked for because you asked for something that's detrimental to your own future. Have you ever told your kid no to something? Mama, can I, uh, Mama, can I go uh, with them? For the weekend. And we all gonna spend the night over here. And you already know some of them little boys bad. <laughs> they bad. <laughs> they bad. And, and yeah, the little girls hot. Fast. And your child asking you, can they go with them for the weekend? But mama, it's okay because they mama going, okay. But they mama let them act like this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that's even worse. Yeah. So my answer is no. Oh, you so lame. Oh, y'all lame. Don't understand nothing. Y'all, oh, boy, I swear. Ooh, irking, irking. These young people got that so bad. Everything is irking. You irking. And you get on my nerves and you don't have a job. And you don't pay no bills. And I'll take them shoes off your feet. It wouldn't pay me to have a kid either. Woo! You gonna do what? What? Hey. Stop begging God for something that he's slow to give you. Yeah. Because if, if God knows how to pace things, he'll pace things. And, and the reason he pace things, because timing is everything to God. Right. It may not mean anything to you, but timing 
You know, you met some good people. Timing was just bad. Man, we would have been good together. Timing just wasn't right. I just came out of summer. Mine wasn't right. And you feel like you fumbled the bag because the timing was not right. If you would have met them in another decade, then, uh, hey, you know, things would have been right. But the timing wasn't right. And so when God withholds something from you, it's because the timing isn't right or it's not meant for you. But whatever it is, you ought to trust whatever decision God makes. Lord, I trust you. This is hurting me, Lord, but I trust you. Lord, I'm tired of being by myself, but I trust you. I'm tired of running into folks that's playing games, Lord, but I trust you. God says, you're trying to trust me and you. One of us can't be trusted. And God says, it ain't me. Because most of the time when you get in something, it ain't God who puts you in it. It's you. You're running ahead of God and he's letting you. Because God wants to lead you, but now you want to lead God. It never works out. Let me, let me, to stand on God's promises also means divorcing your eyes while choosing to believe what God said in his word. I got to divorce my eyes. I see this, but I'm not oblivious to what I see. But at the end of the day, I don't walk by sight. I walk by faith. I'm a faith walker. That means that I don't see everything how everybody else sees it. I, my views are a little bit different because of what I believe. I'm trusting God on this journey. Can you imagine trusting folk on this journey and all you got is people to, to lean and depend on? Mate, Lord, mercy. Let me get to some scriptures here. What does the word stand denote? The word stand means to maintain an upright position supported by your own feet. <laughs> upright position supported by your own feet. Upright position means righteousness supported by your own feet. It means that you are on a, an intentional journey to glorify God with your life. You know, this generation, I've, we, of course, we've never seen this before in our time, but people are pushing further and further away from God. I hear people always want to give glory to the universe. The universe? <laughs> the universe ain't did nothing for me. What you talk about? Universe? I pray to the universe. Man, I'm about to throw this mic to the bank. <laughs> Man, if I hear y'all talk, pray to the universe. <laughs> That's a whole nother sermon. Mm -hmm. To stand means to not be easily moved. To be situated in a particular place or position. That means posture is everything. Posture means everything. God looks at your posture. Standing entails resisting any force trying to move you from where God placed you. That's why I have a greater appreciation for you all. Because you've remained where God placed you. See, many times we want to move on to something because of the turbulence. We, 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 don't like sticking stuff out. That's just the under God truth. As long as everything is moving seamlessly, then everybody wants to be a part of it and everybody wants to be on board. You know, I, I can remember so many promises being made and broken because people start walking by sight and not by faith. People only have faith to believe what they want to believe not what they need to. You got faith to believe that that man really wants you. And you're going to believe it till it takes you to see Jesus. 
but you don't have faith to believe that God can give you somebody that really loves you. <laughs> that's, that's weird to me. Now that's weird. I have faith to hold on to things that's hurting me, but not the things that help. <laughs> Oh, it's a weird thing. Ephesians says this. Ephesians 6.13 says, Therefore, if you're going to stand, it says, put on the full armor of God so that when the days of evil come, you may be able to stand your ground. That's the word. And have done everything to stand. Do you hear what the Apostle Paul is saying? Put on the armor. Because you're going to need it. You can't be walking around here without your armor. Because people are shooting daggers and shooting arrows and shooting all these spiritual forces are coming at you. And you think that you can just leave the house without putting on full armor? Notice it says full armor. Circle the word full. That means you can't come out the house, house half-dressed. When you go to work, you're fully clothed. That means you need to be fully clothed spiritually. What do you need to put on? You need to put on the helmet of salvation. You need to make sure that your salvation is secure in God. You need to put on the breastplate of righteousness. You need to put on the belt of truth. You need to shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. You need to have the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. You need, you need all of that. And you should not leave your home unless you are fully dressed. Because it's hard enough that people have hell in the house. Y'all didn't hear me. I said it's bad enough that some people are going through hell at home. Yeah. To go through hell in your house, yeah. then to leave out your house yeah. without your armor on is just crazy to me. Yeah. Yeah. Because at least the people out here are saying they love me. That means I don't have no expectations from them at all. It's the people in here <laughs> that's telling me that they love me and still bring a hell in my life. But it says you got to put on the full armor of God. Say full armor. Full armor. So that when the days of evil come. Now we're not waiting for the days of evil to come. You want to know why? Because the days of evil are here. Yep. Yep. Man, these kids that you raised and want to slap the taste out of your mouth. <laughs> I don't understand. I, but the life of me. And let me say this, my son is 28 years old. I love my son immensely. I will swim across any ocean to save him. I will risk my life to save his. I will give up my major organs for my son. I love him dearly. But I will make, and I think he knows this, but I reiterate it to anybody. If my son ever raised his hand to hit me, my blood is boiling right now just thinking about it. If my son, because you, we're not talking about no dead beat dad. We're talking about the one who raised you, Negro. The one that came to all your games, the one that went to every PTA meeting, the one who made sure you graduated, the one who fed you, the one who fed your friends too. Yeah. 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 Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. The moment a hand goes up like this yeah. 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 is the day that busted paper is going to come back. <laughs> Y'all didn't hear what I just said. I But I'm, I'm talking about coming off the top ring rope. I'm talking about 
I'm talking about suplex every move I can pull off. My mind won't let me accept that. You're going to always be my son. But the moment you cross those lines, you want to become somebody else to me. And you will get it worse than anybody else because of what I've done for you. Parents, stop playing games with your kids and grandkids. Start jerking the knot in me. I'm about to close this sermon out. But you'll go to jail, Pastor. I'm going. I'm going. I've been before. I'm going back for a long time. And I preach in jail. <laughs> Threatening me with jail ain't gonna stop me from doing what I'm gonna do to you. But he's supposed to be a pastor, right? But then all he's supposed to turn the other cheek. You turn the other cheek. Turn the cheek. Lord, let us pray. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I just, this generation. Yeah. How many of y'all are enabling these kids? You're not going to call me an unfit grandmother, parent, and I'm going to take you to get the latest James. Oh. You're the freshest one in school, but you're the most disrespectful. Yeah. And don't call you call me and ask me to talk to your child. Amen. Lead her on. Lead her on. Because you ain't about to like what I'm gonna say to him. And I ain't gonna preach him no sermon. I'm just telling you the honest God truth. I ain't gonna preach no sermon, and it's gonna be some words that fly out of my mouth. Listen, because you know what? This generation needs that. If God gave me the okay to, to say what I want to say and how I feel it, yeah. everybody be in trouble. They be like, that nigga go crazy. <laughs> that man crazy. How is he up there saying these things and talking like that? Because that's what y'all understand. Y'all yeah. yeah. don't understand nice. Mm -hmm. Y'all don't understand decent. Mm -hmm. It takes somebody to cuss y'all out before you really get it. That's the only language some people understand. Yeah, 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 uh -huh. yeah, yeah. So, we, we got to keep on standing on God's promises. And we got to keep on doing it the way God wants us to do it. David, I'm going to give you this, this last scenario. David could beat Goliath because he trusted in God's promises in, the, in his deliverance. 1 Samuel chapter 17 verse 45 says this. David said to Goliath, you're coming to fight me with a sword, a spear, and a javelin. He says, but I'm coming against you in the name of the Lord who rules over all. He says, you got all your weapons. You got all your stuff. You all big and bad. All on the mountain, God's people. He says, you got all this stuff, and I have nothing. I come in the name of the Lord. They said, I don't even have to fight with the stuff that you're fighting with. And I'm still going to win because of who's for me. Right. And Psalm 20, verse 7 says, some trust in chariots, and some trust in horses. But we, say we, we. we trust in the name of of the Lord our God. Let me say this. God is the source. Amen. God is the plug. He's the real plug. Yeah. 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 He is the source of my strength. And he is the strength of my life. And I can't let people send me out. I got to stay connected to the plug. 
Because if you stay connected to the plug, then you're gonna always have what you need to do what you need to do. David didn't trust in his past victories. He didn't trust in Goliath's past victories. Because remember, Goliath, had, he was undefeated. He was undefeated. He didn't let his age affect his ability to win. Whether you're young or old, it doesn't matter. You still got a lot of winning to do. It doesn't matter how young you are, how old you are. God wants you to win. And if you already won, win again. Keep on winning. Don't stop winning. Because God has made you a winner. That's why he's infusing you with his spirit. Because he wants you to keep on winning. That's why we're here today. Because we want to keep winning. I don't want me to get in the way. Lord, I want to keep on winning for the kingdom. And he didn't let the discouraging words of his brothers distract him from the reason God sent him there in the first place. When David showed up, his brothers like, what you here for? Your own brothers be the ones. <laughs> it be your own people. Yes, sir. What you mean what I'm here for? Daddy sent me here to bring y'all something to eat and to check on the well-being of my brothers. And David shows up and everybody is in fear of their life. And the king is over there in the corner shaking out of his boots. David stands up to Goliath. Saul gladly takes off his armor and tries to give it to David. And what he was really saying without even knowing he was saying it is that David was more worthy to be a king than him. He didn't even know he was saying that. By taking your armor off and giving it to another man to fight a battle that you should be fighting, you're saying that you're more worthy to be a king than me. So he was really prophesying to David without knowing it. Because eventually he did have to give it up. But you know what I love about David? David says, no, this ain't my stuff. Because David did try to, they try to put all Saul's stuff on David. And David said, this is getting in the way of my movement. I can't fight with another man's armor on. This stuff too big, it ain't tailored for me. Do you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. Stop trying to put other folks' stuff on and only wear what God tailor made for you. Yeah. David, you know some people would have kept it on because it feels good to feel like a king. No, you can have the stuff on and still not be qualified. Yeah. 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 <laughs> David beat him without it. And then you know what the people say? Ooh, man, look at David. <laughs> David has killed, Saul has killed thousands, but David has killed 10,000. They start singing David's name then. Why? Because he came out of nowhere. But here's what I want you to hear. God prepared him off the scene. Sometimes you want to be in the end crowd. God has you off on the side by yourself. Preparing you. You want to fit in so bad. God says this ain't your season to fit in. And God says I'm not preparing you to fit in. I'm preparing you to take over. Some people are okay with fitting in. And they don't want that anointing to do more. Because it takes patience. He was out there lonely, eating sheep, smelling like dung, sweating all the time, never invited to parties and stuff. And um, that day, Jesse said, go check on your brothers. And it changed his whole life. And the thing about it is that he was well prepared for what was coming, although he never knew it was coming. He never saw it, but he was well prepared. And so in this walk of life, we got to keep on trusting God. Don't let what's going on in this world distract you from the one true God. The one who loves you. The one who gave his son as a ransom for me. The one who paid it all. The one who loves you more than you love yourself. Don't ever let anybody tell you that God doesn't love you. Don't never let anybody tell you that God can't change your situation. Don't ever let anybody convince you that you don't need God. 
All you need is the universe. <laughs> Don't let that get in your spirit. Because you'll start saying what other people are saying because it sounds right. And it seems to be more acceptable in this society. The universe. Now I give all glory to God. Yeah. My dad used to say that before he sung any song. You call him to the front of the church, he's going to say, rise and give God the honor who's the head of my life. Boy, he ain't been ahead of your life in all these years. <laughs> but he still knew not to give glory to the universe, right. but to the God of the universe. Yeah. You are, you downplaying this thing. If you give it glory to the universe, when there's something bigger than the universe, uh -huh. you play yourself. But anyway, if that's what floats your boat, float on. Better know where your boat gonna stop at, though. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for being who you are. We thank you for your love, your affection. We thank you for your word. We thank you for teaching us and reminding us that we can still trust your promises. <clears throat> you promised never to leave us or forsake us. You've been faithful throughout all generations and will remain faithful. God, we thank you for loving on us. We thank you for teaching us your ways. We thank you for the forgiveness of sin. We thank you for teaching us and allowing us to forgive ourselves. We, we pray that you continue to grow us in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We pray that you will keep equipping us, giving us everything that we need according to godliness. We pray that you will keep pruning us, showing us the way that we will never forget that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father but by him. We thank you that we plead the blood of Jesus over every person, over every household represented here today. We thank you for all you've done, all that you're doing, all that you're going to do. We thank you for making a way out of no way. We thank you for being the most consistent person in our lives. We thank you, Lord, for showing us, God, uh, what we need to work on, for teaching us, God, uh, what we need to do in times like this, God. We thank you for uh, just being the God that you are. Thank you for giving your son as a ransom for us. For those who confess with their mouth and believe in their heart that you raised your son from the dead, you said that they shall be saved. We thank you for the comfort that you give us on a daily basis. We thank you for looking beyond our faults and seeing everything that we need. We thank you for the Holy Spirit who is our keeper and who has been our confidant, our friend, who has been our paraclete. We love you, Lord. We ask that you will continue to lead us and guide us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 I want to do this. I want to extend an invitation. There may be someone here who does not know Christ as personal Lord and Savior. We want to give you an opportunity to give your life to Christ today. Because tomorrow is not promised to any of us. We can't be playing around with this thing uh, because it's getting more and more serious. It's always been serious, but it's getting more and more serious. Things are shifting and changing, and a lot of us are still trying to adapt and adjust to the direction that this world is going. And I want to remind you that you should not ever try to take on this journey without God. You need him. Yeah, you need him every day, every moment of the day. Because what's coming down this pipeline, these folks think they're ready for it, but they're not. Everything is, is shifting. I ain't playing with it. I'm trusting God. Amen. And those things that you need to have, those tough, those tough conversations about, those questions that you have, don't be afraid to, to ask. Ask, talk about it. Don't hold it in. You know, uh, young people, be, they have questions. Don't, don't throw them away because they're asking you questions. Right. Don't throw them away because they don't believe like you believe. They're raised in a totally different society, generation. You, you got some roots, they don't. You know, so uh, try to be a little bit more understanding, but don't compromise what you believe for the sake of appeasing what they want to hear. No. So, let us stand. If all 
hearts and minds are clear. Let's pray. Father, we thank you once again for every person who is represented here today. Thank you for allowing us to assemble together in your name just one more time. We don't know what tomorrow holds, but we do know who holds tomorrow. Thank you for healing. Thank you for deliverance. Thank you for being active in our lives. Not only do we pray for this house, we pray for every pastor, every parishioner, every house that is representing you in your kingdom. We pray, Lord, that you would heal our minds and hearts that we would not try to live wounded, but that you would make us whole again. We thank you for the offering that will be taken, and that it will be used for the purpose of which it was intended, for we know you do love a cheerful giver. We bless your name as we prepare to leave this place and never your presence. We pray that the grace of God and the sweet abiding communion of the Holy Spirit rest rule and abide with each of us, now, henceforth, and forevermore. And the church said, Amen. 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 Of course, you have three different methods to give. You already know. You can cash app Inner Peace Church. You can cl click on the link in the comments and give that way. You can text give to 423-301-5545. Or you can give in person. Uh, as you prepare to leave this place, I pray that you all will share a word with somebody this week. Don't go through a whole week and not tell somebody how good God has been to you. Because somebody needs to hear it. And somebody needs to know that, that God is still working, he's still healing, and he's still on a mission. And so are we. Amen? Amen. I love you all, and I pray that you have an amazing week.